In today's video, we will be discussing statistics, uh, more down to the point averages. But before we discuss averages and statistics and how it relates to statistics, uh, we'll go over some of the upcoming assignments that will be due. All of the module six assignments will be due by December 3rd, 2021. There are about five or six assignments in there, so you have two weeks to get that completed. To get to those assignments, you go to Modules in Blackboard for this course. You go to Module 6, Statistics, and then click on the assignments, and then you'll see all five or six of the assignments that will be due again by December 3rd. Now, when we start talking about averages, most people think of the average that's normally used in school where you have a grade point average or an average of a class score. But average is actually more than just that type of thing. When we talk about averages, we want to, instead of using the word averages, because you see there's a mean average, median average, mode average. You want to call them three measures of central tendency, meaning what is the most likely or what's in the middle, sort of, um, as far as numbers. Now, again, there are three types of measures of central tendencies. The first one being the mean average. This is the average of a data set. So if you take a, a, a bunch of numbers and try to figure out the average of that of those numbers, that's what that is. It's used by, again, calculating. It's calculated by using the sum of all values divided by the number of the values. When you're doing the mean average, you don't need to rank the numbers to calculate the mean average. You can just calculate the numbers in the order that they are in and then find out what that mean average is. So in the example for a mean average, we have, I put a, a bunch of random numbers down here at the bottom uh, to figure out how to do the mean average. I am going to use a calculator. We have two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven 11 numbers. So I'm going to put 50 in plus 23 plus 40, 47 plus 31 plus 23 plus 19 plus 28 plus 76 plus 64 plus 83 plus 95. And all of that equals 539. To find the mean average, we just divide it by the number of values. We have 11 values here, so we're going to divide 539 by 11. And that gives us an average of 49. Now, when discussing the median average, that is the number that's in the middle of the set of the, the, the data sets or the data points. And we would have to organize or rank the numbers from smallest to largest to figure out what number's in the middle. All right, so we're going to rank the numbers, these 11 random numbers. I'm going to use Microsoft Excel. It's much quicker. All right, let me move this over. We have 50, 23, 47, 31, 23, 19, 28, 76, 64, 83 and 95. So we have 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, 
10, 11. So we have all 11 numbers here. Now you can write the, you can actually write it out, but my handwriting's a little sloppy. So I figured it'd be easier on your eyes to just put it in Microsoft Excel. And I'm gonna sort smallest to largest. So we have 19 all the way to 95. And since we have an odd amount of numbers, we just select the number that's in the middle. So for this one, it would be 47. The median average would be 47. If we had an even amount of numbers, then we would have to take the two numbers in the middle. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of 47 so that we have an even amount. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8. 10 and we have to take the two numbers in the middle two, three. why do we have two 23s we shouldn't have two 23s we should have a 47 in there well we'll keep 23 in there that might help this this next the the mode it will help them the mode uh we'll keep 23 in there three four and we have these two. So the two middle numbers are 31 and 50. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take 31 plus 50. We wanna get the mean average of those two numbers. And then we're gonna divide it by two. So the median is gonna be 40.5 if we had an even amount of numbers, but when we had an odd number, we just selected the middle number, which was 47. All right, the next type of average would be the mode average. The value, this is the value that occurs most frequently. It's, it's helpful, but it's not necessary to rank the numbers. So again, if I wanted to just use these numbers down here, or actually I did put a 23 in there twice. So we have, all of the numbers in here. We have 11 numbers in here. And if we decided to do use the mode average, we would just go with the one that has, that appears the most frequently. Now, generally numbers only appear once, but for this, they're appearing, we have 23, which comes up twice. So this would be the mode average here, 23, because that's the number that appears most frequently. If we use the random numbers that I originally had and take out that second 23 and put a 47 in there, well, we have 47 in there. What number did I miss? I need to see what number I miss. We have 50, 23, 47, 31, 23. Oh, I do have 23 in there twice, so that is correct. So I guess I was right. I didn't notice that I had 23 in there twice. But yeah, 23 is in there twice, so that's the mode average. So how would we use the three measures of central tendency in the real world? Well, if we go to, we can go to the internet and we can try to figure out what the average income is of the five largest U.S. cities. So I've already started typing it in there. Average income of five largest U.S. cities. Let's click on this. So we start with Washington, Virginia, Maryland, and we go down to Boston. So I'm going to use Excel again. It's so much easier, and plus it's it's easier on your eyes. Plus it's easier for me to maneuver around things. All right, so in A1, we're going to put Washington. And that's the D.C. area, not the state. And their average income is 47411 The next one is going to be San Jose. And that's going to be 40,300 
92. The next one will be Seattle. And that income is going to be 3922, 39322. Next one is San Francisco. And that's going to be 38. Thousand three fifty five, and then the last one is Boston, and that will be thirty seven thousand three one one. We're going to turn this into a number or not a number but currency, and to do that. Let's expand this a little bit. We go to our home tab, our numbers group, and change the general, change that to currency. And I don't want any of these zeros, so I'm going to get rid of the zeros by going to the home tab, numbers group, and I'm going to decrease the decimal. So now I have a whole number. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to sort smallest to biggest. Span the selection. See if it did it correctly. So Boston. Okay, it did it. It moved the cities with the income level. So now I have it ranked uh, smallest to biggest. This will make it easier when it comes time to do the median, as well as make it easier to do uh, the mode, assuming I was going to be trying to find the mode which there is no mode here there's no number appearing more than once but to do the average i'm going to open up my calculator and i'm going to take the average of all five numbers and this would be the mean average i think i'll put this let's move this over here to a7 Make that span that a little bit, and then we'll have the median average, and then we'll have the mode average. And let's expand this A column so everything fits perfectly. So, the, for the mean average, we take all five of these numbers so 37, 3, 1, 1 plus. 38355 plus 39322 plus 40392 plus 447411 and that equals 202791 that's the sum but we're going to divide that by the number of values, which we have five values. So we're going to divide that by five. And that gives us a mean average of $40,558.20. So we have $40,558.20. So this is the average of the top five largest U.S. cities, this is that average income from those top five largest cities. Uh, we can do the mode average, very simple, because none of these, again, none of them appear more than once. So we'll just put a, a minus there, put that in the middle, let's center that. But for the median, we can figure out by looking at since the, it's an odd number, we just select the, the, the number that's in the middle, which is Seattle. The median average is going to be 39,322. So we'll do 39,322. And we're going to turn that into a currency. And get rid of those zeros. All right, let's say that we wanted to do the top six. I'm going to go ahead and insert another row, and I'm going to get the number six, which is Honolulu. 
And let me type that in there. Okay. Honolulu. So. Cho N O L U L U. And their average income is thirty six three three nine. And it automatically turned it into into a currency. And I'm gonna put. We have to differentiate what this is. Top five cities, and this would be top six cities. Okay, so we're going to calculate the mean average for the top six cities. And let me see if we have that. We have, yeah, so we have 20279. This is the total for the top five. And actually, you know what? I'm not going to be lazy. I'm just going to do it all over again. So we have 36339. Nine plus four seven four one one plus four zero three nine two plus three nine three two two plus three eight three five five plus three seven three one one so this gives me a total of the top six cities what their average income is now since we're using six numbers or six values this time we're going to divide it by six and our average income ends out ends up to be thirty nine thousand eight hundred fifty five dollars and we're going to change all of these to currency we go to home tab numbers group change it from general to currency and then also decrease the number of zeros now to find the median again we need to figure out what's the middle number and since this is a even these are we have an even number of values we need to sort it we need to actually rank it or to sort it and we're going to continue with concurrent. Nope, expand the selection because we want the, the cities to move with the averages. All right, so now we have it ranked lowest to highest. And since it's an even number, we need to take the two middle numbers, which would be San Francisco and Seattle. And we need to add those. We need to get the mean average for those. Three, nine, Three nine three two two plus three eight three five five that equals seventy seven thousand six hundred seventy seven. After we get that, now we get the mean average. We divide it by the number of values, which is two, and that would equal to thirty eight thousand eight hundred thirty eight dollars and fifty cents. We got three, eight, eight, three, eight point five zero. And it rounded it up, but I'm going to change that to increase the decimals because I want to see that 50 cent there. Now, for the mode average, all of the numbers appear only once. So, again, there's no mode average in there. We'll make that center. Now, the next thing I'm going to discuss is the range. The range is pretty much what's the lowest number to the highest number. And all the other numbers go in between that. So for the top six U.S. cities, 
the using the using the income it is our range would be and it's good to rank rank the the numbers when you're trying to figure out the range our range is going to be so I'll put that there it's going to be 36,000 $339. So three, six, three, three, nine, zero or nine. And the highest number is 47, four, one, one. Now you can use this range to kind of draw a graph of the, the income levels for this example. So we would put that down here and I have a horizontal line going across. We have all right, so that's the dollar sign. Oh, terrible. So we have a dollar sign here, 47.4. This is why I typed it in Excel. So that's 47.411. And this is 36.339. And in the middle, the median. We're going to use that 38,838.50. And then we can start plotting the different income levels. We have the next one we have is, let's see, what city is that? It's Boston. That's 37311. So we would plot that. We'll put it like right here. So we have that right here, three, seven, three, one, one. The next one is 38, three, five, five. That's San Francisco. So we got 38. And this is why I typed it in Excel, three, five, five. So we can put that there. The next one is going to be Seattle, which is right here. And that number is three, nine, three, two, two. And then the next one is going to be San Jose. And that's a little bit closer to, so that's a little bit over. And what is their number? I think it's four, four, zero. I'm going to write it right here, 40392 dollar sign. We'll put it right there. So that's the median right there, that 38838.50. We can start discussing the shapes of distribution and what the skewness is, whether it's left skewed, right skewed, and if it's symmetric or it looks alike. For our example here, um, I'll talk about the skewness as well as the, the distribution, the shape of distribution. So the distribution for this is symmetric. It's normal because the left half of, we'll say mirror, it images the right half. We have three incomes on the left side. So we have these three incomes on the left side, and we have three incomes on the right side. And when we say right or left, we have that median right in the middle to tell us what's the, the middle av or what's the middle average or the median average. If this was going to be distributed left skewed, that would mean that there would be more, more values on the left hand side of the median. If it was right skewed, it would be more values on the right hand side. So keep that in mind when you have a distribution, you want to figure out whether it's symmetric, left skewed, or right skewed. You just have to figure out which side has the most values. That's you set up your 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 median and figure out which side has the most values on it. So for this one, this this shape of distribution is symmetric, meaning that it's even on both sides. So that's all I had to discuss as far as averages. 
again, remember there's three central tendency measurements. You have median average, mean average, mode average. And based off of those numbers and the values, you can come up with the range and you can figure out what the skewness is of the distribution. The last thing you need to do is your journal entry. You say what you learned in today's class. If there's anything we need to review in next week's class, it has to be at least 50 words and the subject line should state the class math 201, today's date, journal entry.